So paper one is done. And it's probably out of your memory by now, having sat plenty of other exams in between. Although you'll always be wondering if you calculated the correct height of an extinct rhino shoulder. Anyway, never mind, it's done. And whether you found it easy or whether you found it difficult, it's now time to start turning your attention towards paper two. So what's going to be in paper two and what should you revise? Well, to start with, you know that there are certain topics that can only be tested on paper two and they, they just they won't come up in paper one at all. So these ones you've got to make sure you have read, uh, read up on and revised really thoroughly. Effective pH on enzymes, turgid and flaccid plant cells, just the names of those uh, cells once water is moved in or out of them by osmosis. A little bit specifically on the balanced diet, um, and that experiment where you burn food to work out the energy inside of um, inside food, so the energy requirements of different people and how to manage, measure energy content in food, that experiment. Uh, the structure and function of the phloem, so the xylem is in, could come up in paper one, but the phloem can't, but the phloem could come up in paper two, so make sure you know that properly. Um, specific experiments in respiration um, and looking at the net gas exchange um, in plants um, using hydrogen carbonate indicator um, and how heat is given off in respiration as well using probably looking at the experiment with flasks with germinating season or dead season that's all paper two stuff how platelets clot to the blood is paper two vaccination and that sort of specific area of how vaccine what vaccines are and how vaccines work uh, the details of how the eye focuses on near and um, far away objects, so accommodation is what we call that, and specifically how the pupil changes diameter using the circular and radial muscles um, in order to protect the eye and to, to, to change how much light comes in or out of the eye. So that's something uh, that comes up regularly. The skin, nothing on the skin comes up in paper one, but it can come up in paper two. Um, factors needed for seed germination. Co-dominance in genetics, just that specific part of inheritance is only a paper two uh, bit there. Factors that increase mutations, mutagens, stuff like that. The water cycle and nitrogen cycle, so carbon cycle could have come up in paper one, but water cycle and nitrogen cycle are only paper two topics. Sewage in water systems, yogurt production, beer production is paper one, yogurt production, paper two. Specific details of fermenters, what fermenter is and the conditions um, that fermenters keep in order to maximize the yield and um, the conditions for uh, microorganisms to reproduce. Uh, the term transgenic, so again, it's really what that term means, but that's all part of the bigger genetic engineering topic. And again, um, also within that sort of area really is the advantages and disadvantages of cloning. So, not all of these could come up in paper two, of course, because paper two is only an hour long. Um, but if I was you, I would make sure I know all of these topics inside out, inside out. And there's 20 there, I'll list them in the description for the video for you, but these are the ones you really wanna make sure you know very, 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 very well. There are some um, in there on that list which are just really small extensions of other topics that could have come up in paper one. Um, so if they haven't come up yet, then again, that's probably something that I would move up my sort of priority list because I suppose there's more chance of them being tested in uh, paper two. I mean, a good example of that is the eye. So you've got to think to yourself, did the eye come up in paper one? Okay, if it didn't, then the fact that there's two big things on the eye for paper two, such as accommodation and changing the pupil diameter, then um, it's very likely that if they didn't bother to test the eye at all in paper one, then, and those are paper two topics that I would, you know, would say quite possibly the eye could come up in paper two. So think about what came up um, in paper one. Uh, ask yourself the question, was that test in paper one um, or not? And uh, think about those big topics as well. So even if they're not listed somewhere in those 20 things I've put down there for paper two topics, think to yourself, okay, well, it's not a paper two topic specifically, but actually, you know, they didn't ask anything on reproduction or they didn't ask anything on transpiration, I don't know, whatever was not in paper one at all, when you think about big topics in the course, then obviously let's move those up our, our priority list as well and make sure that we've really nailed those down, okay? So make sure you've covered those 20, 20 points there that are only paper two topics, make sure you know them really, really well, make sure you know anything didn't come up in paper one uh, as well. Um, now I'm, I'm not a 
I don't really like making predictions. Um, and my advice is really that you should prepare as thoroughly uh, as possible as I've outlined in this video. But if I was a betting man, uh, which I'm not, unless it's the Grand National, but if I was, then I would say maybe something on cloning, maybe um, it could be animal or plant cloning coming up. Um, uh, the skin and the eye are really popular paper two topics. Usually one or both of those come up in paper two somewhere. Um, and I've got a feeling about the nitrogen cycle this year as well. Anyway, whatever happens, do your best. Quite often candidates feel a lot uh, better prepared about paper two because they've already done a lot of work for paper one. And really it's just topping up your knowledge and making sure you, you're confident on those really s small details that could only come up in paper two. Do lots of past paper practice. Uh, think about specifically that, that first question, which usually comes with a large amount of text to read first. Um, don't worry about that. Get that exam technique sorted. You don't always need all that information in the text, but read it carefully. Read the questions carefully and follow all my usual advice that I give you for preparing for exams. So good luck.